What's up guys welcome sat study stream friday edition why is it so cold that's the question okay oh <laughs> we will get into that that will happen cool what's up everybody uh, how's everybody doing today Friday. Last day of school. You guys get a break, a righteous break. So I'm excited for you guys, for sure. It's freezing. Yeah. Pretty much. Well, bros, I'll tell you what. I got some materials. You're a little cold, huh? Me too. Well, I got some materials to do today that I'm very excited about. Very excited because I made them for you guys. This, You guys won't see these problems anywhere else. I didn't steal these from a book or whatever. So this is these, the first time that these problems will breathe, you know what I mean? So I'm excited about that. Yesterday, we talked about word choice. The day before, we talked about categorizing the problems. And when we talk about categorizing the problems, we're talking about this guy right here. This thing. Okay. Your, your uh, writing question will be one of these five categories. Verbs, pronouns, transition, word choice, punctuation. If it's not in one of these categories, it's not going to be asked on the test. So we went over word choice yesterday. Pretty quick, but we went over it. The day before we talked about identifying which problem you're going to be working on. So today we push forward. Today we're going to be talking about verbs, verb tense, verb problems. We're going to do a little like catch up, little knock the rust off type thing. Then I have some questions for you guys. And then I have a test section for you guys. So the SAT writing test is broken up into four passages. Each passage is about 200 words and they're 11 questions long. You get about eight minutes and 45 seconds to do each 11 question paragraph. And they kind of bleed into each other, so most people don't really notice that, but yeah, there's four paragraphs and you're gonna do a paragraph of the 11 questions I've built up for you guys today. All right, cool. So I think everybody's here more or less. It's gonna, probably gonna be a light crowd, you know, Friday. The Friday after you guys get released from, <laughs> get released. So let's go into it and let's start talking about verb tense. The first thing that we need to go over just as a general guideline is the things that we need to look for here. So I'm gonna make this bigger so y'all so can see this. All right, chill. So is it like comprehension? Uh, yes and no. Uh, with comprehension, it's like big 
stylized paragraph and then, you know, eight to 10 questions or whatever. With the writing section, they're mostly informational paragraphs. So they're all stylistically very similar. And the way that it's set up on the page, it's very, very different from reading comp. You'll see, you'll do, you'll do a paragraph today. I have a paragraph for you guys, because if you guys are studying the day after you get out of school, then I got a little treat, got a little early Christmas present for you guys. So verbs, we're looking for tense. And what that means is just the very simply past, present, future. There are some verb tenses that we are going to go in today that you need to be aware of. But for the most part, that's pretty easy. The number, it needs to match the number. You wouldn't say John swim, you know what I mean? John swims. Uh, sorry, says, why do the SAT have an essay? Do you write a college essay at the end of high school? Uh, yeah, you're 100% correct. That's a great question. I have no idea. Well, I do, <laughs> I do know why the SAT has an essay, but it's not part of your score. So uh, we might go over it on this channel sometime in the future, but just it's super not important. Uh, it's basically just, I, I mean, it's a long story, but it doesn't really mean anything. Um, everyday Tyler looks like he's working a different job because of his clothes. <laughs> I ch gotta change my jacket up, dude. I, I, you know, I can't just wear my. I have like a um a flannel that I keep in my office for when it gets cold, and I just like wrap myself in it. But if I wore the same flannel every day, you guys would think that I'm like, you know, I gotta show some variety. You know what I mean? But yeah, it's construction worker Tyler today. So this is what we're looking at. Parallelism, very easy. Uh, swimming, jumping, running. You wouldn't say swimming, jumping to run. All right, so that's it. So if you look at your answer choices and you notice that they're all verbs and that the, the verbs are changing, um, something like this. Um, <laughs> I thought this was ready. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. <laughs> So if you notice that the verbs are changing, so for example, like, um, let me just give you like a really easy one. Like even this, like look at the answer choices on this. Run, running, runnered. <laughs> runnered isn't a verb, uh, but it's not a word. But what you're noticing is that there is a change in the word. And what they're doing is changing the tense of the word. So you know that you're in verbs and you know you just need to check to make sure that it matches the correct number. You need to check that it is in the right tense. And you need to check that it's not in any kind of like parallelism kind of situation. So let's go through these uh, these ones that I have prepped. Oh, no, that's the, uh, that's the one later. All right, let's do this one first. All right, bros. So I'll read this to you guys, and then you guys can you guys can attack this on your own. Uh, ask leave. What's up, my guy? Yeah, three hours long. Oh my gosh, three hour long martial arts. We'll just learn to fight people, bro. All right. So the robotics of various laboratories around the East Coast contribute greatly to our understanding of machines. The row where the many labs operate in Boston, in particular, stretch for a mile and a half through neighborhoods of the inner city. So we have some uh, answer choices for you ready to go because I prepped the stream today. <laughs> a, no change. B, stretching. C, stretches. D, had stretched. So what do you guys think this answer is? What do you guys think? Uh, obviously, the underline is on stretch there, uh, second to last line. Uh, go ahead. I'll give you guys like a, a like a minute or so to think about this. Uh, but although you should only get 45 seconds. So I'm only going to give you guys 45 seconds. Let's go. And this clock's got to move. Oh, no. Great, chill. The clock, the clock can hang out here. That's a good spot. All right, so answers are coming in. Infernus is on C. Sorry, is on B then? Nope, C. Remisa is on C. So it looks like everybody's on C. Ven is on C. Anybody else? You guys got like 15 more seconds. <laughs> Great. Okay, cool. That is time. So really, really great, guys. Really, really lovely. So what you guys noticed and what I think you guys noticed is you noticed that the first and foremost, before we even get to what's underlined here, you go through the answer choices, you realize they're all in different verb tenses. So we're looking for verbs, go through the checklist in your head. That means it needs to be in the right tense. It needs to match the number and it needs to be parallel. So what we're looking at is the robotics of the various laboratories around the East Coast contribute. That's present tense. 
uh, the row where the machine where the mini labs operate that's present tense and so stretch that's present tense so check we're good to go the next thing that we need to check is that it belongs to the noun so what is doing the stretching what is the stretch the row where the labs operate stretch so if you get rid of that modifying phrase where the where the many labs operate in Boston in particular it just says that the row stretch for a mile so it should say stretches because stretch goes to the row and row stretches not row stretch right row is singular and stretches is also a singular verb so very nice bros very nice but you see you just got to like you just got to go through the steps and it's every time it's automatic dude like you really should not miss that many questions in the grammar section. It should be like slam dunk city for you, bro. Uh, yeah, Crunchy's on C too. Yep. Ask Leave is on C. Hong's on C. Nice, bros. Okay, next one. Next one. Each of the boys run to their locker to see if the new uniforms are in. We have runs, running, <laughs> and runnered. 45 seconds, guys. That's half of the clock. Let's go. Okay, that's half time. <laughs> I did. I just finally watched Endgame. I didn't get, I didn't finish it. I I don't know. I liked it, but I didn't finish it. Uh Remisa's on A. Sorry is on A. Sorry, you've been crushing it recently. Uh Crunchy is on A A A. You are right, Taylor. <laughs> <laughs> Am I mispronouncing your name, S Sleeve? Is is can you spell it phonetically so I can get it? All right, so that's enough time for sure. Uh, Justin is on B. Okay, so guys, I I'm gonna annoy you. I'm gonna annoy you. Okay, I don't even care. I don't even care if I lose subscribers from this. But I'm gonna do the technique every single time. You should do the technique every single time. Don't even look at the passage. Don't even look at it. Why are we even looking at this sentence? Don't look at it. Go to straight to the answer choices. Runs, running, runner, we know we're the verb tense. What is that checklist in your head? Tense, matching the number, and parallelism. I don't see parallelism here, so we can get rid of it. We don't have, we don't know. 2C is present, but we don't really know if this is past presence. We're gonna assume, and all actually, all the verbs are in present tense, so that's easy. Uh, runner is not a word. So <laughs> they would not put runner. I was just tired and bored. So now we need to match it to the noun each of the boys run now is the sentence saying the boys run or are they saying each run right what's the noun there what does the noun for the verb run attach itself to what noun does it attach itself to that is the question you got to ask yourself and with this it's a great example not just because i did it but it's a great example uh <laughs> it's it's each singular right each of the boys you could say each person right you could just say each right of the boys is a modifying phrase and each is singular each is a weird word have you ever said it out loud each yeah so this each needs to run so each or you could do it singular so it needs to be b it needs to be b runs very nice very very nice all right you guys are almost ready how many more we got? We got two more, and then we're going to jump into the timed section. You guys can do this. Uh... <laughs> Tyler, very well knowing he's a little nervous of losing subs just by saying he doesn't care. Yeah, I don't care. You think I care about losing subs? Please don't unsubscribe from my channel. So here is the next one. Um, I'll put a clock up. Uh, as Delona walked back to her house, she noticed someone defaces her door with graffiti. The words whoop whoop were scribbled on the door's window and cans of spray paint were left behind. No one was in sight. Forgot to underline. Okay. All right, now we underline, we good. All right, so what's the answer on this one? Each sounds like itch. Yeah, itch, each. I don't know. I feel the same way by Jeep. I'm like, what is that? Jeep, eep, eep. 
watching a movie and not finishing it should be a crime. Well, it put me in jail, bro. I just could not finish Avengers. It just got kind of corny towards the end. Okay, guys, that's time for this one. I didn't get any answers for this one. Did I? No. I didn't get any answers in the 45 seconds. Maybe there's like a little bit of a lag. But okay, so Hong is on C. Vena is on C. Sorry is on C. Okay, here are the answers. I knew you guys could do it. Crunchy's on C. Ramisa's on C. Okay, so a lot of people are on C. Bros. This is one of those. Remember how I said verb tense can be kind of tricky? Notice that I set you guys up. The past two had to do with matching it to the noun. This one has to do. Yeah, it is. It is slow. It's like 20 seconds behind. I'm just used to like the minute and a half type thing. Um, so this one is is uh, matching the tense, right? And it's not a simple tense because we know that it's in past tense, right? Delona walked, no dist, right? Scribbled, right? You know what I mean? Was in sight. So all the verbs are in the past tense. Going into the answer choices. Defaces, no change, is present tense. Deface is present tense. Defaced is past tense. And D, had defaced, is past tense. What's up, Muster? Yeah, there's a 20-second delay. Uh... <laughs> that's actually how it, in furnace, that's actually how it is in the SAT. They don't line up the, uh, the question because there's supposed to be a question next to the number nine. Um, yeah. So notice that C and D are both past tense. Does that trigger any alarms, right? They're both past, past tense, right? So with that, we need to think of which past tense do we need? Do we need the past perfect, which is had defaced? Or do we need the simple past, which is defaced? So here is a clue for you guys. Had defaced means that the action is completed. And generally, they use had defaced or they use the verb had plus a verb, like I had swim, I had swam, I had eaten, I had sat. They use that had verb to indicate that something's been completed and to indicate that it happened before something else happened, right? Like I had finished my breakfast before the earthquake hit, right? So that means I had completed the breakfast um, or I had eaten my breakfast before the earthquake hit. That means I was done eating my breakfast. Um, so that's the actual correct answer here. The correct answer is D, had defaced, right? She noticed someone had defaced. The rest of the passage is necessary to give you the information that the person is long gone. The action is already completed and is not doing any more. So even though defaced can work there, had defaced is much more specific because it indicates that the action has stopped. So... And notice she's walking when she had to face. So she's doing two verbs at the same time. That's a very common for had. So the answer is actually D. You guys all missed it. <laughs> okay, so the next one we should do, last one before we actually get into the, um, into the actual passage that we're going to work on today. So here is the, here it is. He read the paper slowly. Did I underline it? Yes. He read the paper slowly. He enjoyed hearing about the baseball games of the day and wished to savor every word. As he read the articles, circled the final scores, he realized that the Yankees just might win it all this year. Circles, circling, will circle. Let's get it. Sorry, sorry, Shad. It's uh, grammar week. What can I say? It's good. Next week is probably going to be grammar week too, my guy. But maybe I'll do like a, a Christmas version where we can do like a bunch of math problems or something. Yeah, exactly. Asleep. That's exactly it, my guy. You got to know it. You got to trust yourself. <laughs> it's grammar week. We can't just do math every day, guys. There's four sections to the SAT and only two of them are math. So we have to, we have to kind of, we have to switch it up. I, you know, I'm versatile, bro. I can't just be a math guy. I got to be the whole thing guy. All right. So, I, you know, I'll give you guys a couple more seconds to, to answer this one. I'm very interested to see what you guys think. And remember to have fun. Okay. Answers coming in. Hot. Hong is on C. Infernus is on C. Sorry, C. Remise is on B. Good for you. Muster is on C, and Ass Leaves on C as well. I could do math every day, bro. 
Crunchy's on C. Okay, a lot of people are on C. So this is another example of verb tense. We talked about what needs to happen. So you go to the answer choices, you look at them, what's happening and what's changing. The tense, and these are all verbs, is changing. So we need to check the tense that it matches the number and that there's not parallelism. There's no parallelism that I see. But what we're looking at is tense. Now, everything is in the past tense. Read, enjoyed, right, wished. Everything's in the past tense. So a lot of people are pretty, pretty cool with circled, but that's actually incorrect. Um, what we are looking at is a non-essential modifier. And we're also looking at the ing verb of C. Whenever you have C, like circling, that also very similar to had is indicating that you have multiple actions happening at the same time. So as he read the article, circling the final scores, he realized that the Yankees just might win it all this year. So circling can be past tense because it's framed in the past tense. And while he's reading, he's circling. So that is the correct answer for this one, circling. All right, so let me get some water. Let me get some, uh, let me get a beat going. going on there. Okay, so check this out. You know, I, I put it all on the line for the chat. I had the morning off this morning. So what did I do? Did I play Call of Duty? Not a single game. Not a single game. Did I just browse the internet, go on Twitter to see what's up? No. Did I put together a grammar passage for the chat to do today? I did. Merry Christmas, Esleaf. I really should buy a Christmas tree. That is a really good idea, sorry. What am I doing for Christmas? Uh, nothing, it's kind of kind of sad. <laughs> I don't have any plans. <laughs> It's not Christmas yet. It will be. It will be. Okay, cool. So let's go into it. Like I said, I put it all the line for the chat. <laughs> okay. All right. Here it is. In all of its glory. Let's get this clock over here. We don't need this. All right, we'll put it over the chat. Sorry, chat. You, you know I love you, but... Get rid of this. You don't need this. All right, bros. I'm going to cut this music. We're going to take this seriously, bro. We're going to take this seriously. Maybe a little bit of background music. Nah, not that. Uh, okay, cool. The dude, Muster, you're the man. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, see ya, Infernos. Keep it easy, bro. Yeah, exactly, bro. Why can't it be B? Oh, uh, actually, let's go back and address that really quick because I, I want to make sure that Ramis has got that last one. Um, for this one, this circled, right? Circles is present tense. And so as he read past tense, circles the final score, then we're jumping to present tense. Then he realized we jumped to the past tense. So that's why B is incorrect on this one. That's why circled is incorrect on this one. Okay, great, 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 great. So we're going back. We're going to the uh, passage here, like I promised you. All right, guys, first question. I will start the clock again. You guys have 45 seconds. Begin. And write down the answers on your own. I'm not going to keep track of your own answers. So you got to keep track of your own answers. I'm not going to keep track of them for you. And we're going to go over all of them at the end. Yeah, I got you, Ramisa. Don't even trip. You know what? You know I got you. Okay, 15 more seconds. And I'm going to keep you guys on pace, too. We, we're not messing around today. Number two. Uh, there's going to be 11 questions, so you can't really use the survey, unfortunately. No, we haven't used it yet, but you could use it for the first five, Buster.
Okay. Question number three. Okay, number four. Oh, nice. Justin Hong is keeping his answers. That's nice. He's keeping a string, so he's just adding one answer to his thing. That's really smart, Justin. That's really good, Hong. So question number four, guys. 20 more seconds. Question number five. Ten more seconds. Question number six. Twenty more seconds. Okay. Question number seven. We cruising? Yo, Tenzin, we're just doing grammar questions, bro. I got you guys on a clock. Question number eight. Five more seconds. Okay, number nine. Three more. Yeah, Tenzin. <laughs> yeah, again, yeah. We're going to be working on grammar for the next next week or so, at least. I want to make sure there's everything. You know, some channels just do math. Some channels just do English. I want to do both. 
20 more seconds on this question. Question number 10. Nice tension. Jumping in, bro. That's good. And number 11, last one. Okay, that's time. Time is up. All right, bros. So that was the pacing of one fourth of the grammar section on the SAT. You have to do that four times in a row at that pace and maintain that pace for four sections. Uh, and then you'll be good. Now, you'll notice that all of these questions are verb questions, so you didn't have to go through the answer choices and go, oh, you know, what category is this in? You guys knew you were dealing with verbs. So that should help you time-wise a little bit. Uh, I'm going to go back from number one so that you guys can start writing down your answers. Like in the chat or whatever, start writing down what your answers were. I'm going to go through all 11 questions really quick before I tell you what the answers are. But I'm going to go back through the 11 questions so you can remind yourself what you put for each of them. So number one, that's number one. Try to remember what you put for it. Number two, Muster and Sari are like already good to go. That's exactly what I was looking for. Like a string like either Muster or Sari has going on. That's number two. That's number three. Just kind of remember what you put. Right. Wasn't that long ago. This is number four. Just kind of remember what you put. Yeah, it's okay, Tenzin. We'll start you at eight or whatever. This is number five. Remember what you put for it. Number six. Write down your answers. Seven. What did you put down? Eight. Nine. And 10. Okay, cool. So we got everybody's string in there. I am very interested. Or we got a couple strings in there. We got uh, Muster, Sorry, uh, Justin, and Venna so far. And then number 11 is this guy, if you can remember. Okay, cool. So yeah, those were the questions. Uh, Hong, what'd you put for five and six, man? That's what's on the screen. Try to remember what you put. I got you. I got you. All right. Okay, bros. So that was that section. First off, I'm just very curious. Um, what were your guys' overall reaction to this? Um, you don't know the rest, Crunchy? That's okay, bro. What was your overall reaction to this passage? Did you think it was easy? Did you think it was hard? This, this type of feedback kind of helps me because I wrote this. I put this together. Um, so if you guys think it was easy or if you guys think it was super hard or if you think it was unfair or if you think it was too, too simple... Uh, let me know so that I can adjust um, adjust my the way that I make these from now on. <laughs> yeah.
You don't like time zones? Not that bad. Okay. What do you mean you don't like time zones? It was okay. Oh, you forgot. That's okay. Not like, I don't know. It's just, I forgot. Oh, right, right, right. Yeah. Yeah, that's fine. I mean, maybe maybe we'll go over it and you'll remember it. Okay, well, cool. Thanks for the feedback, guy. My main issue was really remembering the tense of the whole reading. Yes, muster. Yes, it's difficult, bro. Pretty fair. Thanks, Venna. Yeah, this is difficult stuff. So the fact that you guys pounded through it and you pounded through it in time is very encouraging. This is the first time you guys have ever had to do something like this on this channel. So I'm very pumped for you guys. Uh, surrounding sentences to figure that out. Muster. That's exactly it. That's exactly what you got to do, my guy. So let's go through all of these. Uh, I'm going to try to move through it pretty quickly. I feel like, I don't know, maybe you guys can tell me, but I feel like I have been explaining things a little too slow. I can go a lot faster. Like I can explain things really fast, but I don't want to leave people behind. 20 seconds select, and then we'll reply 40 seconds after it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's very true with the lag, bro. And then we reply four seconds later. Yeah. You read this in A plus? Lies. Lies. There's no way you read this in A plus, April. Uh, Rachel. What's up, Rachel, by the way? <laughs> she, comes, she, she comes into the chat firing, bro. There's no way you read this. I wrote this. I wrote this this morning. So, And I wrote these questions this morning. So there's no way you've done this unless they've stolen my documents. So let's go through these and let's talk about how they work. Uh, they're all verb tense. So we just need to talk about that in that kind of domain. So the very first thing is uh, Yellowstone Natural Park sits, right? A lot of people, uh, or I, I did see a comment, I forget who said it, where they're being like, yeah, you're April. Exactly, Rachel. Yeah. Uh, that feels like forever ago, by the way. That feels like years ago now. Uh, a lot of people are like, well, everything's in the past. The only thing in the past is had sat, which means that it's completed. That means really, you know, it's done sitting there. But since Yellowstone National Park currently exists, we do need to keep it in the present tense. If you change it to sitting, that makes it an incomplete sentence. Because the verb sitting, any ing verb, cannot really act as the verb in the sentence. So I couldn't say John sitting. That's not a sentence. Um, even if you say John sitting on the bench, that's not a sentence. That's just a setup. That's just a large noun. So one is a. Um, yeah, exactly. One is a for sure. Something so similar. Well, maybe. I, I just can't. I mean, maybe they did, but I just kind of like ripped this off Wikipedia. <laughs> but yeah, I feel like there should be a comma for it to be C. Yeah, well, C would make it an incomplete sentence. Now, if you said Yellowstone Natural Park sitting on 3,471 square miles in the northeast corner of Wyoming, comma, is a national landmark, that would be fine because it would be a big non-essential modifier and we don't need a sentence inside there. So that would work. Yeah, yeah that's a good point, um, Muster. Uh, next one, number two. Uh, it designated a national park. It makes it seem like Yellowstone is doing the designation. Yeah, exactly, Tenzin. So it makes this second one, as written, makes it seem like the park is doing the designation. It, what's the it? The national park, okay? So it designated a national park. You know, it doesn't make any sense. We want to say that it was designated, and that's B. So this is a passively written sentence, but number two is B. Number three, uh, today Yellowstone welcome over 4 million visitors each year. Uh, we need to check the tense. We need to match the number and check the parallelism. There's no parallelism here. Today, Yellowstone. Yellowstone is the noun. Welcome is a plural noun. Yellowstone is singular. So it needs to be welcomes. The answer to three is B. Four, maintaining a park like Yellowstone takes an enormous amount of support. We don't need to read that. Around 800 employees work around the year in order to maintain, do outreach, and to oversee all aspects of the park. This is a juicy, juicy question, my guys. Juicy question number four. So we go through, we check the tense, we check the number, we check the parallelism. We're looking at a list here. So we're looking at parallelism. Around 800 employees work around the year in order to maintain, in order to do outreach, and in order to, to oversee. Too many twos, bros. 
So you have to figure out where the list branches, where it branches. That's super, super important. Um, no, it's, it wouldn't be over C, okay? So let me just address the branching aspect of this really quickly because I, this is like the only one like this in the whole thing. So I want to make sure that we, we talk about it a little bit. Uh, let me pull it up. So uh, see ya and hello. All right, so let's talk about branching. Like, um, All right, so this is what this problem is doing to you guys. So here is like a normal sentence. Jim likes to swim. Jim likes to laugh. Jim likes to sing. But look at how I wrote it down here. And my handwriting's atrocious. So I just tried to whip this one out. Jim likes to swim, laugh, and to sing. That doesn't make any... That, that's not... We already have the two here. And the two applies to swim. The two applies to laugh. And the two applies to to sing. That's what's going on here. So looking at this again... For number four, it says 800 employees work around the year. Why? In order to maintain, in order to do outreach, and in order to oversee all aspects of the park. Now, that fixed the parallelism of it, and that's why the answer is B. Um, it cannot be overseas because we're talking about 800 employees, and that's plural. And so it's got to be overseas. Number five uh, so yeah, the answer to that one is B. Number five, uh, this takes away potential fuel. Um, taking would make it an incomplete sentence because that's the only verb of the sentence. Uh, some teacher told me that in a list, you do, don't need a period before and. You mean a comma before and? Um, okay, cool. So number five, firefighters clear dry underbush from the more dense areas of the park this which is the clearing of dense areas takes away that is correct as written uh, because the clearing of the underbrush is a singular noun it's a singular concept so takes is okay so number five is actually a bros um yeah, so to address what you're saying, Rachel, with the comma before the and, that's what's considered an Oxford comma. I use it because I'm a classy guy and because I think it makes a lot more sense logically to use the Oxford comma. But, you know, I, I don't know. I, 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 could, I could really go deep into that, but it, that is an optional comma. So if she doesn't want it or whatever, then I guess she doesn't get to get one. Uh, natural fires, a force of good in Yellowstone. We're on number six right now allows so this is a really sneaky one so you have to match the number on this one and look at the noun right before the number the noun is right the noun is yellowstone which is singular if you just started there yellowstone allows older brush to burn away that sounds really good but notice that that yellowstone has a comma after it because it's part of a non-essential modifier bruh really what this is supposed to say is natural fires allow older brush natural fires are plural so we actually need six to be b it needs to be um it needs to be uh you can if you want yeah so six needs to be b allows natural fires allow next one because of the lengths that the staff goes to ensure a safe park, we don't need to read this. By the way, there are sixteen around 1,600 words in a writing section. You don't need to read all of them. Um, so the number seven, the recreational departments of the park. The noun that is doing the offering is or are the recreational departments. So number seven is D, offer, the recreational departments offer number eight these access via roads uh these access so the campsites are the ones who are doing the accessing no so the we need to write it passively and that's why eight is d can be accessed via road 
um, because they can be accessed. It's not that the campsites are accessing anything. So that's why eight is D. Home stretch, bros. Home stretch. Yeah, exactly. That's exactly it, Rachel. Seven is D. Uh, number nine, these sites sitting deep off the beaten trail are, right? This is another time where I tried to trick you, where I put trail next to the verb. Trail is singular. So it makes you want to put is, but na na na. <laughs> no, no, no. It's sites. Sites are the ones that are. So these sites are only accessible, right? D is in the past tense if you wanted to do that, but have been. Um, I don't know if we do need to jump into the past tense here. Number 10. In fact, the park's some 10,000 hydrothermal features make, right? The features make. So that's actually good to go. Uh, A, no change because the features can make. Right, and then the last one. This is an issue of parallelism again, because we actually have a list of a list. Look at those semicolons go. Whenever you have list items that themselves have commas in them, you have to use semicolons for your list. So since its creation, Yellowstone has served the American public with its accessibility and awe-inspiring raw nature. Yellowstone has grown in popularity and size. Yellowstone has has become no 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 no. So it's got to be become. Uh, it's got to be uh, become. It has served. Oh, it should be became. <laughs> I have a typo in here. All right, whatever. You guys get it. <laughs> Uh, well, actually, become can work because has become does work. So I'm not going to be ashamed of my my choices here. So the answer to number 11 is B. Yeah. So good job. Good job, everybody. Hold on. Where's the uh, where's the good job music? Whoa. <laughs> good job, everybody. Those are the answers. How'd you guys do? Did anybody get them all right? I'm interested. I'm very interested to see how you guys did on this. Um, this is the this is verb tense in the SAT. If you can do this, that's like 10% of the grammar section. In the bag, it's like a gimme. 10 out of 11. Got caught the trap. That's right, bro. Yeah. Dude, you guys got homework over the break? It's whack. Why? Like, what's the point? What's the point? Oh, yeah, Rachel. <laughs> just, I would take back the tape. We uh, we did a timed assignment, um, and you just came in right as we finished the time assignment and then went over the answers. Yeah. Venna, six out of 10. Six out of 11. That is not good. <laughs> you got four right, Tenzin? Oh, no. <laughs> Imagine getting on no homework. Well, that's my lifestyle, bro. No homework ever. Dude, being an adult is way better than being in school. I will just tell you that for sure. I don't know what happened to my science packet. Good luck with that, bro. Can't relate. Yeah. Homework? What is that? Um, so yeah, these are, this is pretty much all, I mean, there's other tricks that they kind of pull that I don't want to like go into right now. Ooh, negative zero out of 11. Nice, Rachel. Very nice. Oh, big super chat from sorry. Thanks. Sorry. You just earned yourself some good vibes. You just earned yourself some extra points on the next standardized test you take. Uh, yeah, thank you a lot. Uh, I got to, I got a lot to study for the break. Yeah. Yeah. But also make sure you guys are taking a break. Like it's super, super, super important that you guys relax and you guys take care of yourself and you guys do like, you know, recuperative stuff. You know what I mean? Because if you're grinding for an entire semester, you know, you, there's going to be an equal and opposite reaction to that. So you got to catch some sleep. You got to catch some. Yeah, exactly. 
you you rarely even get homework. I'm so deprived of it. We'll just come to the live stream, bro. We're going to be grinding. You know it. You know it. <laughs> okay, cool. So I actually didn't really, I don't really, let me throw some uh, tracks on the back. Whoa. I don't actually have anything that I really wanted to work with you guys after this. I just kind of put the section together for us to grind through and then obviously to talk about afterwards. So I didn't really, you know, I didn't really think about what we could do after this. Uh, so if you have any questions, you, I guess I can field them now. Um, or if you have any requests on requests on what you guys want to do next week, we can talk about that now too, uh, because it's going to be kind of Christmas. Yeah, that's exactly it, Shad. You want to do some math? We can do math. Any uh, anything in particular, or is it just kind of like in general? <laughs> okay. So let's see if I can get you guys with something. You need some time to math, some time to rest. Yeah, bro, dude, don't neglect the rest. Even if you don't think you need rest, like just give yourself a little bit of rest and see how that feels. You know what I mean? Like I've been, I've just been like trying to do a kind of, since the SHSAT, I've just been trying to kick it. You know what I mean? Feed you math. I can feed you math. You want some hard algebra? Okay. We can head to math, bruh. think is going down all right whoa all right so we're back in the mix apparently all right guys we're, we're sorting it out we're sorting it out here okay <laughs> sorry about technical difficulties but we're back okay let me think of something hard for you guys Why is my handwriting trash today? I gotta work on that. All right, minute and a half, let's go. <laughs> Can we do not hard ones, please? Well, this is kind of a not hard one. It's not like the hardest in the world. Something is terribly wrong with my clock. <laughs> is it moving even? Uh, clock check? Clock check. Ben is on 10. 
Yo, Venna, check your work. I'm gonna get another one going for you guys. Uh, I'm asking for the length because the the width is three times the length. I'm asking for the length. <laughs> Tenzin. <laughs> I mean, you're right. <laughs> So tens we know Tenzin's right. Okay. Alright, so we got some more answers popping in here. Okay. Ah. Alright, bros. That's enough time. Let's go over this. That's way more than enough time. You guys don't need any more. Hong's got it, though. Alright. I just know there's a little bit of delay, so I want to keep it going. Alright, so let's set this up. System of equation style. Let's get these tracks out of here so the perimeter of a rectangle is 34 that means 2l plus 2w is going to equal 34 that's kind of our first move we need to make and then we know that the width is a three times the length so yeah we have a system of equations here for sure okay sorry's into so i could muster musters into this is looking like it might be the right answer bros uh you weren't even answering well you put l dude that is the length so we can substitute in for 3L, right, for every W. So we're going to just move this, and we're going to say that it's... I'm going to try to make my handwriting better. 2L plus 2 times 3L equals 34. This is going to be 6L. Cool. Bros. <laughs> what's going on here? Okay, zero. Zero. Very good. Uh, that goes in twice. 16, four. Awesome. Yeah. Good. Good. Five. Yep. 4.25. Very nice. Good job, chat. Next. So I guess we don't need to do a redemption of that because you guys crushed it so hard. Um, we could do a different one though. I'm gonna see if I can do a very very difficult one for you guys um, So just kind of kick it for a couple seconds. I will be I will be back um, So just kind of enjoy yourselves talk amongst yourselves All right, bros.
All right, let me just double check that this all works out clean. Okay, that works too. All right, bros. Here's a question. I <laughs> got the chat. Uh... Thrive off silence. It's hilarious. Okay. All right, bros, here it is. We don't need this anymore. All right, so here's the question. I'm gonna give you guys three minutes legit on this. That's a C, that's eight C. Yeah, I showed you guys how to do this at the beginning of the week. I think it was Monday that we went over this, but you forgot. <laughs> so the key is, is to add two of these equations together in order to get one of the variables to drop out, because then you're left with an equation with two variables in it, and then you have to do that to another two equations. So that's the, the overview of it to hopefully jog your memory. Okay. okay, guys, we're approaching halfway on this problem. I'm going to give you guys two rotations, so three minutes. Yeah, Tenzin, quick, go back to the other video on Monday and check it out. Yeah, well, if the variable didn't drop, then you need to manipulate one of the equations, either times both sides by a number or divide both sides by a number in order to get it so that when you do, when you do put it together, you'll get something to drop out. That's okay. We're, we're not as strict, Rachel, as we were during SHSAT, so... You can you can adjust your answer. We're not as crazy as we were. Not as strict. All right, guys, you should be wrapping it up hopefully by now. Okay, this is Zena. Great, Hong. Great. All right, well, impressive. If you're able to get it in under three minutes, it's very, very impressive, I got to say. Um, I'll give you a little bit more time just because I want to make sure everybody can have an opportunity to give this one a fair shake. And definitely don't forget to drop a like on the video if you haven't already. And if you're new to the channel, welcome. I hope you would subscribe and it will keep you notified on new fresh content. We only do fresh content on this channel, okay? Uh, Hong's got 0.5. Okay, cool. Shad's got an answer in there. Shad has one half as well.
When are the SHSAT results coming? They are, yeah, exactly, Venna. Coming in March, guys. So just be on the lookout about that. I'll, I'll be making videos and updates, trust. When we, get, when we get closer to those results, I will let you guys know. Okay, so let's go through this. Let's talk about how this one goes down. Blue pen? Yeah. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm thinking it's going to be a blue pen. So we need to manipulate these equations to get some of the variables to drop out. Ideally, we want to get this A to drop out and the B to drop out would be a nice addition as well. So we're going to go ahead and try to do that. Let me zoom out on this guy. Pop imagine, yeah. All right, bros. So I'm going to manipulate and I'm going to multiply this top equation, the entire thing by negative one. So what I get is a negative A. I've already messed up, plus a negative 2b, uh, and just straight up plus 2c equals a positive 2. And now I can add it to this equation, which is a plus b plus 10c equals negative 6. Now I can add them together, and these a's are going to drop out. So the a's drop out. What I end up with is a negative b plus 12c equals a negative 4. All right, chill. So that is great information. We already have one equation with two variables. Now we just need another equation with two variables and we're gonna be able to solve it. All right, I like that confidence, Rachel, that's good. Um, okay, let's see, if, hey, let's roll that dice. Let's see what's good. So this is the first time that we do it. Now I'm gonna take two different equations and add them together. I'm going to take this equation and this equation and add it together. But I will have to manipulate this bottom equation. I'm going to multiply this bottom equation by two. So when I do that, what I get, oh, you can see that. When I can do that, I get the um, negative 2a minus 2b minus 10c equals a positive, oh boy, equals a positive, did I multiply this properly? Yeah, negative, negative, okay, equals a positive, 12 because we're multiplying everything by a negative 2 right and then now I can throw this top equation in and, and add it to this equation down here um, the top equation is 2a minus 4b plus 8c equals 6 so now I can add these up these a's cancel out 6b this is a negative 2c equals 18 okay so does that work? I don't like that at all. Twelve. What did I do wrong? Hold on. I feel like I did something wrong and I won't Ah, I did do something wrong. Okay, good. Good. Get rid of that. That was just a check. That was just a check to see if you guys were paying attention. Uh, so <laughs> now you got zero. Yeah. So that was actually incorrect. So I'm going to multiply this entire thing by negative two, the entire thing. Um, and so what I end up getting, I'm going to draw a little squiggly is negative two a minus two B minus 20 C. That's where I messed up equals a positive 12. And the other line stays just fine. Like it was, I knew I had messed up, but Dude, it doesn't matter if you do purposeful mess ups like that to see if you guys are napping or not. If you go back and you keep uh, checking as you go, that's like a huge thing about that. All right, Rachel is back and we're, what we're seeing is Rachel's like the in, inner, inner yin and yang of her mentality fighting over this answer. So we're gonna add these up. Negative six B minus 12 C equals 18. So here, are our two equations. And now we have a system of equations. So I'll rewrite them so you can see them together. Don't say I never give you quality problems. So <laughs> we have these two. And to get to this very simple system of equation, which gets us one step away from the answer, remember what we had to do. We had to manipulate one of these equations so that when we add them together, we drop the A. Then we had to pick two different equations and manipulate them so that when we add them together, we drop the A. And so now we have two equations with two variables in them. We're looking extremely well poised. 
Um, so I'm going to solve for b here. And what this ends up being is b equals 12c plus 4. And whenever I see a b, I'm going to substitute that in. So it's going to be negative 6, 12c plus 4, minus 12c equals 18. So doing the multiplication here, negative 72c minus 24 minus 12c equals 18. I'm going to add 24 to each side. And your, your boy is running out of room real quick. So negative 72, let me just rewrite this, negative 72c, uh, 18 plus 24, we all know that, obviously, is 2, well, is 42, duh. So 72c minus 12c equals positive 42. That's kind of where we're at with it. Then we're going to do our subtraction here and um did i do everything right i feel like i'm just working so fast that I, i'm not doing something right hold on so we did our substitution that's b equals 12c plus 4 that's looking good this is our equation that's our b 12c plus 4 that's negative 72 that's negative 24 add 24 add 24 and that's minus 12c that's good to go yeah we're looking really good actually I'm looking really good all right so what we end up getting is negative 72c minus 12c equals 6 uh, 42 um, which is lovely. Um, then we do this subtraction and we get negative 84 C equals 42. Did you guys get this? Did you guys get this negative 84 C equals 42? I know the work is a little all over the place. I apologize for not being as clean as I normally am, but this is the solution to this age game, to this systems of equations is negative 84 C equals 42. If we divide both sides by negative 84, divide by negative 84, what we get is C equals negative one half. That's, you hear that? That's a slow clap, a one person slow clap. That's right, bros. I finally, finally, finally thought of a math problem to trick you guys. Everybody's on positive one half, bros. It is negative one half. It is a negative one half. That is the that is the solution to this. And if we were to go through all of this, A would be one, B would be negative two, and C would be negative one half. The bandwagon was real. The bandwagon went off the cliff today. But, you know, you live and you learn. You live, laugh, and love. What is it? Live, laugh, and love? <laughs> wow. Wow. Dude. Uh, we need, yeah, exactly. We need, we need a redemption. That's what we need. I'm, I'm late. I should have been gone by now, but I cannot leave you without a redemption. So, you guys, you guys think. All right, you guys think to yourself, bro. You you think to yourself, what did I, where did I go wrong? And I'm going to put on some backtracks and I'm going to give you an opportunity to redeem yourself. Enjoy your dinner, Hong.
Okay. All right, bros, get ready. <laughs> Prepare yourself. All right, bros. Let me get really serious real, real quick with the chat here. Do you understand? Do you understand what's about to happen? After that last question, that last question that nobody got right except for me. Do you hear that? That means redemption is here. Can you grab it? Can you grasp it? Or do you let redemption slip, slip beneath your fingers? Now's the time to prove yourself. We're not playing around. If there's a negative, you gotta use it. You now know how to do this. There's no excuses. You have no excuses. So get ready. Here's your problem. What a sequel, guys. All right, bros. Two clicks to the clock. Let's get it. I'm going to get out of here. I'm going to get some more water. Um, bang, bang. And be right back. I'm back. Okay, guys, that is a minute and a half. We got a minute and a half more to go.
Okay, that is three minutes. This one is harder, though, so keep on working. Redemptions can't be easy. Yeah, the silence is deadly. Should I put on some, uh, some calming music for you guys? Just relax, man. <laughs> is anyone doing the problem? Yeah, I'm sure there are people doing the problem, but it's just hard. Maybe I shouldn't have made the redemption so hard. <laughs> this redemption's really hard. It's okay, Tenzin. You know, just uh, you know, enjoy yourself. I guess. Yo, Rachel, how many zeros are you add to that? <laughs> how many zeros you want? I got you, I got you for as many zeros as you need. Uh, Henry? Henry, you're really doing great, bro. Really crushing, bro, I gotta say. Okay, I'll keep the 100. Yo, is that DJ Russo? DJ Russo, what's up, man? <laughs> also, don't forget to like the video if you haven't, and if you're brand new to the channel, welcome. Uh, subscribe for more content. All right, guys. Crunchy, you gonna jump on? Why not? Bandwagon's nice and warm. Alright, dudes. Let's go through this. I think that's the whole gang. Gang gang. This one this problem stinks. I don't I like I'm dreading doing this problem. <laughs> I made it up, okay? Alright, so let's do perp. So I'm gonna get rid of this music or else I'm gonna probably go crazy. Alright. So we need to get rid of variables and hopefully we can keep it so the C can hang out. Um, so we're going to try to get rid of other variables. This first equation to me seems super ripe to add to this second equation. Yeah, exactly. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to add this to the second equation. I'm going to multiply both sides of this equation by positive 2. So I get 4A minus 8B plus one fifth C equals 24. Okay. And that one fifth is just reduced from two tenths. So then I'm going to add it to the second equation, which is negative four a plus 16 B plus C equals 94. And we're going to add these two equations together. And what we end up getting is eight B plus, we can just say one and one fifth C equals, I could use a calculator, but you know me, 118. So there's our first kind of beautiful equation that has a B and C in it. And so now we're gonna add this top equation to a different equation this time. I'm gonna add it to this bottom equation to get our second two variable thing. See, Tenzin, keep it easy, my guy. 
Um, so I'm going to multiply this now by negative 3. So it's going to be negative 6a plus 12b minus 3 tenths c equals negative 36. That's all negative 3, negative 3, negative 3, and negative 3. And now I can add it to this bottom equation again, which would be 6a minus 20b plus 1 over 100c equals 9. Add them up. We get negative 8b minus, so 3 tenths would be 30 a hundredths, and that's negative plus 1 a hundredth. That would be negative 29 over 100 equals a negative 27. All right, bros. So we're home. We have our two equations. So I'm actually going to do something a little bit different this time. Um, let's see here. Yeah, I'm going to do something a little bit different this time. And rather than doing the substitution method where we isolate for B and we, then we substitute it in, look at this, bro. Look at this 8. Look at that negative 8. I'm just going to add these equations one more time together. And those Bs will drop out like easy. So let's set it up. I'm going to make this 6 over 5c rather than rather than 1 and 1 fifth I'm going to do 6 over 5c equals 118 and the second equation is and that minus negative 29 is now the positive 29 and that equals negative 27 all right and now I can just add them together 118 minus 27 191 and now we have this mess. This 6 over 5 is the same thing as saying, um, what would it be, 120 over 100. So 120 over 100 plus 29 is going to be 149 over 100. Okay, so this is our equation for C. And of course, C. So let me rewrite this so it doesn't look like absolute trash. 149 over 100 c equals 91. Okay, now I'm going to multiply both sides. Wait, are you correcting my, my, did you find a purposeful mistake? Negative 27. Yeah, negative 27, bro. Because negative 27 is the result of, I multiplied this top equation here by negative 3, negative 3, negative 3, negative 3, negative 3, and I resulted in this, and that's a negative 36. 12 times negative 3, and then I added it to this 9 here, and that's a positive 9, so that's a negative 27. Yeah. Shouldn't it be 27? No, negative 36 plus a positive 9 is negative 27. Yeah. You did the same mistake. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, that, that does track to me. I feel like we're on... We are on course here to be crushing up um, really soon. So let's keep going with this problem because we have our equation here. I'm going to multiply both sides by 100. And now I need paper. So I get 149C equals 9100. Bros. That's what's going on. Um, oh, you did the opposite of that? Oh, I see, I see, okay. So then we divide by 149. We divide by 149, and is that right? Is that 91? Yeah, yep, that looks good to me. So it's positive 91, great. Um, and is that 29? So that would be 120 times, oh, times b times 20, yeah, that's good. Plus 29, 149, yeah, I'm looking good. I'm feeling good, looking good and feeling good. So divide here. I don't want to do this division, so I'm going to pull up a calculator. <laughs> I don't want to do the division, so I'm going to pull up a calculator. Uh, let's see. All right, bros. 
All right, bros. So nobody caught it. Nobody caught the purposeful mistake that I dropped into this problem. Let's see if you guys can catch this, if I go through it again. So the first thing that we did was we multiplied this top equation by, by 2, and we got that's times 2, that's times 2, and that's 2 tenths or 1 fifth C, and that is times 2. Then we added it to this, negative 8 times plus 16 is negative 8. 1 fifth plus C is 1 fifth C, and then 24 and 94 is 118. That tracks. Then our second equation, what we did is we multiplied it by negative 3, so that's negative 6. That's a positive 12, and that's negative 3 tenths, and that's a negative 36. And then we added them to this bottom equation here. So that would be negative 3. That's the same thing as negative 30 over 10 plus 1 over 100. That's negative 29 over 100 and it would be negative. So then that'd be negative, and that's still a negative AB, and then that's negative 27. Bros, <laughs> have you caught it yet? Have you caught the, purpose mis the purposeful mistake that I left into this problem? Um, let's see. So then we continue forward. That's going to be 6 fifths C. That makes sense. That's 8B. Maybe I didn't add them properly. Did I not add it properly? No, I added it properly. It looks good. That looks so good. Why is there a problem? I'm not liking this problem. Hold on. Let me graph it. Make sure that we're good to go here. Maybe I set it up wrong. Desmos. Desmos, come save me. Let's see. So it would be 8x plus, let's say, 6 divided by 5. 6 divided by 5 y equals 118. That's the first equation. The second equation is negative 8x plus 29 divided by 100. Oops. And I can show you what I'm doing. I'm just graphing up real quick. 100. equals negative 27. Oh. Cool. So now we see with these two lines cross. Yeah, there's a problem with my equation somewhere. <laughs> there is a there's definitely a problem with the equation somewhere. It's not as easy to calculate it. Yeah, 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 bruh. Um <laughs> so where did I make my mistake? That's the question of the day. Where did the mistake come from? Two tenths is one fifth. Yes, that is 24. Yes, that is negative four. That's positive 16. That's C. That's 94. That's 118. That looks great. 8B plus one and one fifth C. Okay, that is fine. Um, that's good to go. Huh, I wonder where I made my mistake in the equation. That's so crazy to me. That is so crazy to me. <laughs> Everybody's like, <laughs> you can use a calculator on the SAT. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Uh, move on. No, I didn't make a mistake. For those of you who said I made a mistake, that's incorrect. What I did is I dropped something purposeful into this problem. I dropped a purposeful error to see if you guys are with me, to see if you guys are following me. So, you know, I do that every once in a while. And you guys are just witnessing it now. Negative 3 is 36. Negative 3 tenths C. That's a positive 12. That's great. Yeah, I don't know where the problem is, bros. Uh, I don't know where I put that purposeful mistake for you guys to find. You know, sometimes even I lay Easter eggs for you guys. And, you know, even then, even then, I don't remember where I hid the Easter egg. You know, it's like an Easter egg hunt type thing. Um, but yeah, you know what's funny about this? When I was setting up this problem, the answer for C was 100. <laughs> so it's like the chat got it. Like, let me show you what I was setting up. So here are the equations I used to set this up. Here's my work. Okay, so this is the equation and this is how much it equals. And here were the numbers that I was using for the variables. So 
<laughs> but you can't even find your error. It's not an error. It's an Easter egg that I hid. Uh, it's an Easter egg that I hid for you guys to find. Uh, for for future generations to watch this live stream and to watch to find that Easter egg, yeah, it's on the paper. Yeah, exactly, it's somewhere on the paper. Um, but I'm not gonna tell you. I'm not gonna tell you guys where I left the mistake. But what I can tell you, the mistake is on the paper. Exactly, Tenzin. What I can t tell you, and you know, this is this. Is, I just want to say this briefly before we move on. C is a hundred. C is a hundred. The redemption's real. <laughs> yes! Good job, everybody. You redeemed yourself. I'm so proud of you. I'm so proud. <laughs> the mistake was the paper itself. Yeah, the mistake was ever using paper. I can't believe it. I can't believe it. I will find I will find my Easter egg that I hid for you guys, and we will we we, we can talk about it on Monday. But <laughs> so you guys all got it right, which is so funny to me. It's like you guys can't find the mistake that I left in my work, but your guys' work is really good. So I'm super pumped for you guys. I'm so excited. You know, even when even when it seems like I'm making a mistake, you guys are learning and growing. So, I mean, what can you really say about these purposeful mistakes that I make other than, you know, the chat gets it. The chat learns. Uh, did you do the problem wrong twice? <laughs> I don't think so. You know, if I did it wrong twice, maybe it's like a double negative where it would turn right again. Uh, I am like blown away. I'm like... I'm just thinking of myself. I'm like, where did that, where did that mistake come from? You know what I mean? Like, it's such a, uh, it's probably something so lame. You know what I mean? But I mean, we'll, we'll eventually, you know, we'll eventually figure it out. School starts on Thursday. What? You mean Thursday after next week? Not actually next week. You know what I mean? Uh, let me put on some schmood here. I'm just trying to kick it for the end of the stream here. Yeah. That's a short break. That's a really short break. No, exactly, Muster. I got you for uh, C for being C for being 100, my guy. And that's what I was doing when I was planning this problem. I had C being 100. So really good. Really, really good, guys. Non-sarcastic clapping. Do you see the Easter egg, Muster? Monster is the VIP of the stream. You guys see that? You guys see that? Wow. Okay, so this would be positive. When it should be negative, right? Fall big brain equals small brain? Not really. Yes. Yes, Buster. Coming in so hot. So good, dude. So yeah, this would actually change this negative 29 would be negative. All right, so let's 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 make good on this. Let's make good on this. <laughs> dude, Buster's putting in work today. You going to put work in today. Okay. So, and then we have, all right, let's add, so then, or it'd be positive, so it'd be zero B plus positive 91 over a hundred C equals that um, 91 number. Dudes, <laughs> yes, yes. 
<laughs> That's so good. Okay, great. So then we get that 91 over 100. C equals 91. We can multiply both sides by 100. 91C equals 9100. C equals 100. Dudes. Dudes. The real redemption is the friends we made along the way. Wow. What a time to be alive. It's 100. <laughs> But dude, that should show you guys. I hope you guys take a lesson of the idea of precision. Uh, the whole reason that I kind of dropped that extra negative sign in there is to see if you guys would notice. Good job to Muster for noticing that. Uh, yeah, <laughs> going through your emojis. Yeah, uh, dude, this isn't my phone that you're sending the emojis to. It's YouTube's. Uh, it's YouTube's like font or or whatever. Um, so yeah, the answer is a hundred. Good job, really good job, bros. Um, so yeah, that is the that is the answer here. Okay, dudes. Next week you guys get a break. Does that mean we're taking a break from the streams? No. Okay, we're gonna keep grinding. I don't think I'm gonna. I, I think I'm gonna be out on Christmas, maybe Christmas Eve. But for the most part, I'll be here grinding, bros. Yeah, exactly. As we go on, remember all the times we had together. <laughs> it's not a song, like a really old song, graduation song. Is that what that's from? <laughs> yeah. All right. So you guys know you guys know the iconic ending. Here it comes. You need no math. <laughs> oh yeah, it is the Google and Apple difference, yeah. All right, bros. So dudes, enjoy your break. Enjoy the time that you get to spend just kicking it. Uh, we're gonna be back on Monday with more grammar. I know you guys don't love grammar, but... <laughs> How could I? say goodbye to what we had the good times what is that from that song it's the iconic ending shot yeah so guys don't forget how to time to be alive guys don't forget if you guys can share this video or share the channel let people know that we're going to be grinding on the live stream i'm always trying to grow trying to get the channel to be a little bit bigger uh i'll rematch you crunchy do you know the map now Cause I'm in a, I'm, I'm ranked master now on COD, bro. What a time to be alive. <laughs> you guys totally get it. All right, I'm out of here. I'll see you guys on Monday. Enjoy your break. Enjoy your break. Enjoy your break. Get some sleep. I'm gonna get some sleep too. But yeah, keep it easy guys. I'll see ya. <laughs>